People hate trans people, everyone. Trans people are hated everywhere. He held my neck and he strangled it so hard. I felt like I'm losing my breath. They want to see me dead, maybe. They wanted to see me dead. There's a lady that was seated opposite of where we're seated and they began whispering and talking a lot of things and I told Jay, can we move away from here? I think there's something getting funny. So we hadn't actually even moved a step ahead and the bottle was thrown on us. And then we had someone from the behind shout and said, thank you so much. You should do it again. From nowhere, this guy jumped through a wall that was separating where we were seated and where they were. On me, very unaware, I was very unaware, standing. And we, we just landed with him on the ground. And then he was beating me, beating me so hard. And I even didn't know why he was beating me. He was whispering in my ears like, we'll finish you people, we'll finish you people. And I asked him, what have I even done? They were assaulted by a group of famous rugby players because of their gender identity. And it was so sad that the, the victims in the matter were the ones who ended up in police custody. And nothing, and police did not give protection to, to the people they should have been protecting in the first place. He walked in and picked this guy that beat, that assaulted us, clearly walked him through the door to his car and told us he's a celebrity and he cannot be touched. And the guy drove away. Why if me, I was bleeding, I was crying, can I please go to the hospital? Even if I'm left onto those handcuffs, let me be in the hospital with them. I am losing myself, I don't understand, I am so dizzy. It took them very long for, to, 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 to react. So after a few minutes, the bouncers came and carried me and carried Jay, threw us to the van, police van. So we were arrested and taken to police, and also we were you know, checked, pushed, um, they undressed us and checked to ascertain if we are really female or male. And then that's when they took us to the female side and then locked us in. Up to morning, without medication, I was bleeding so badly. I was crying. My head was hurting. My head was very swollen. While in custody, there were other violations that they actually faced. Like when Williams went to went for medical first aid. He was being bullied by the, by the police doctor himself. He removed my binder. And then after removing my binder, he touched, you know, my, my chest. And then he began laughing and he called the other nurse and he was like, can you believe this is a girl? And I told him, I'm here for medication. Why don't you treat me before you begin, you know, laughing and saying all these things. When I saw him, I was speechless. I couldn't recognize him because when they told me that's Williams from back, I said yes. And I went to see him, but as he was standing, his face was swollen and because we are a, a little bit far from them. We've parked the other side at the police station and I told them I don't think he is. He's not Williams because I didn't recognize him. But when I came near, it was him. and. My man is so emotional, I know that, so I had to be strong for him to pretend everything was okay, but deep inside it was killing me, yeah. But I just gave him a very tight hug. I hugged him so tight. This past week we have received so many cases in respect to uh, um, people who identify as trans persons and most of them are being assaulted within the communities, within bars, within social, social places, within um, communities where they, where they live in.
this weekend one of the neighbors came and told me that how she's heard people saying that they were seeing these trans people coming to my place and they were asking where do they go. They were like, those boy girls are going to Beyonce's place and they know me. They were like, it's, we, we, are going to, we are going to hunt for them, get them, cut off their balls and burn them to death. We had to lock ourselves inside morning up to evening. And we couldn't even walk outside, do what, yeah. So on, on Sunday, I think that's when Beyonce tried to walk out. She had gone to work, I think. So when she came back in the evening at around seven, the evening, they beat her up. People just grabbed me and began beating me up. They boxed me and were saying, let's remove the teeth. So I think they didn't want me to see them. They just beat me and made sure that I, I slipped down. And um, they began stepping on me. They were strangling me and they were twisting my hands and they were stepping on my back. So one of my old friends saw, when we saw, he came to rescue me and he had to make sure that he pulled the bag away and that I had. And I was lucky that I didn't move with my laptop, so he saved me. So I was crying and I was so scared. I didn't want even, I didn't remember to ask for his number or something because I was just shaking. I don't know what was going to happen next to me because I was in trauma, I was thinking. Because each time I keep seeing people, when I see many people, I think they are coming to attack me. This traumatized because I'm traumatized already. The trauma still comes back. I'm afraid because because they want to kill me as me not only me but what I've seen is to every trans person because I'm receiving calls from my friends they have the same threats the amount of trauma is too much like every time I imagine that situation I find myself crying so I avoid to be alone I'm at risk as a trans person I'm at risk because when people look at me they do not know that I'm trans, but they will identify me as gay. And I can't hide it, I can't keep in the closet. I can't hide it. And that's the way I am. I can't pretend to be someone else. Trans people are targeted clearly because they think we are the homosexuals. Because we are the faces here, it's easy to identify a transgender person. The community is so much homophobic and the the rate of homophobia is about 95 percent. All these attacks are geared towards, you know, trying to address the whole issue of removing homosexuals from Uganda or correcting us of what they think is wrong. The community is very angry ever since the bill was nullified and people promise actually we'll deal with those people one by one. I think it's also another hate. Why do people say that what does the government accept homosexuality? It's something that is I think which is bringing this again, this hate again. I think people think attacking us is going to be a solution because they think the government hasn't reached to their demands of, of them passing the bill and then chasing out homosexuals or trying to correct us of who they think we are. So basically, I think the community is very angry and, and they're trying to revenge by attacking people. The constitution of Uganda gives protections for all Ugandans. Because we believe before you're anything else, your first Ugandan and your human being. There's nothing particular to protect trans people as trans people, but we use the law that protects every other, every other Ugandan that should also be protecting the trans community, the, trans, the transgender persons. Like right to a fair hearing, right to protection from degrading and inhumane treatment. So those are, those are some of the of the laws, of the laws in our constitution that we rely on to actually seek protection for trans persons.
we are human beings and we are Ugandan citizens opening a case and we follow up at least this can create change in the community and to other people that even if people are cultures, they are not entitled to be maybe beaten up or something. I think it's um, a, an opportunity for us, a starting point for us to start from there. It's like a, an advocacy platform because we, we cannot give up. What happened was terrible and it can happen to someone else.